there, this is Jackson O'Brien. Uh, I'm the head barista of Peace Coffee, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to brew a Hario V60. This is a marvelous little brewer, good for brewing about one cup of coffee at a time. By cup, I do mean one of these mugs thereabouts. Uh, I'm going to be brewing a 250 milliliter brew, uh, which will fill that up nicely. Uh, and for that, I'm going to use 16 grams of coffee. Uh, so excellent place to start is measuring your coffee. I'm going to do this by weight uh, because of the fact it's way more accurate than going by volume. I've got my scale here. Grab my bag and pour until that says 16. There we go. Let's be accurate for the purposes of posterity. There we go. 16 grams exactly. Now, for this, I'm going to be using a, gr a grind size that is consistent with drip coffee. Um, this is going to be a grind size that's just going to be a tiny bit coarser, a tiny bit grittier than uh, the way that table salt or table sugar feels. I'll show you guys how that looks just by grinding this little uh, thing right here. Hopefully you can get some sense of how that looks. Um, there's a little bit of grit to it, but not too much. So I'm going to lay that aside. I'm not going to grind it quite yet because I want to first prep my brewer. Um, right now this is sitting at room temperature, which means that as soon as hot water hits it, it's going to uh, cool down the water as the brewer heats up. So I'm going to prevent that by basically rinsing the filter, uh, which will also clear out any paper taste out of your brew, uh, and also will heat up the entire apparatus so that it stays at consistent temperature throughout. I've got my little kettle here. I'm just going to fill this with water. Take my filter, I'm going to open that up and fold over this little pleated side that's going to make it fit a lot more snugly into the brewer. Pop that in and just real quick rinse that entire apparatus. Get that filter nice and flush with the sides of the brewer here. Uh, that's also going to allow it so that all of the water flows straight through the coffee bed rather than around it, around the sides of the brewer, as long as that filter is flush with the sides of the brewer. So discard that, rinse water, set everything on my scale so I'm ready to go. I'm going to grind my coffee. Take that and pop it right on my brewer here. If I tear it out, it's back to zero so I know exactly how much water I'm adding as I go. I'm also going to start a timer as I go uh, so that I can keep track of how long this brew takes. So first I'm going to hit this with just enough water to saturate the grounds. It's going to be about twice my dose weight, so I'm at about 30 grams here. You can see how the uh, coffee is kind of swelling and it's a little bubbly at the top there. Uh, that's a good sign. That tells me that the coffee is freshly roasted. It still has some CO2 gas in it. And this stage here called the bloom is just going to flush that CO2 gas out of there so that uh, all of the water can evenly penetrate and evenly saturate the coffee grounds. Let that sit for about 30 seconds. There we go. And now I'm going to do my first pour. I'm just going to get everything kind of wet and saturated here. And step back. Uh, you can see how the top, we have some sort of dark spots, some spots where there's things clinging to the sides of the filter. I'm just going to wait just a little bit, let that settle, really reveal where those dark spots are. And then I'm going to pour again. Uh, and that's going to show, to push those uh, things that are floating and those things that are clinging down to the bottom of the slurry. Pour again. Nice and slow, nice and even. So now I've got a much more even color on top of my slurry here and I can see that a lot more stuff is sunk to the bottom but it's still a few things floating. You can see some dark spots right here and again around the edges. So I'm just going to wait a little bit longer. You never want to pour all the way to the top because if you pour all the way to the top you're never going to be able to pour any higher than that to really wash those things away. So pour in pulses gradually. So, pour again. I'm 
and stop. Now here, I'm looking here and I can see that the slurry is kind of breaking up. Uh, you can see how uh, it's not all one continuous sheen of bubbles. Uh, those bubbles are starting to break up and you can start to see some uh, black liquid underneath them. That is a sign that pretty much everything is sunk to the bottom of this brewer. And that is a sign that, it's, that I can finish my pour. Just hit with all the water that's remaining until this scale says 250. Good V60 brew should take somewhere around uh, three minutes, uh, maybe a touch longer. Um, so I'm at two minutes and 20 seconds now. That should mean that it should take me about a little under a minute for this water to finish dripping through. Uh, if it takes longer than that to drip through, it might be a sign that I should uh, grind my coffee a little bit coarser because the finer grind is going to impede the flow of the water. If it took way less time than that, then maybe I'd want to grind a little bit finer to so impede that brew a little time a little bit longer so that the uh, dwell time took a little bit more time. Always the funnest part is just waiting for that drawdown to happen. So here we have it. The brew is finished. Uh, at about three and a half minutes, that's a marvelous amount of time for this brew. You can see how the bottom of that brew bed is nice and flat. Uh, there's not a lot clinging to the sides of the brewer. It's not very conical. Um, that's what we want to see. Uh, and so taking this and then just grab my brewer off the top, throw this in the compost, take this, pour it in my mug. Cheers. <laughs>